Mike with Paolo Benchero here at Colorado Springs at USA Basketball training camp. And I wanted to talk to you about a couple things. This year we've seen the recruiting calendar get completely shaken up, where we only have one week of July to play. What do you think about that? I mean, does that matter? I know you played last year. Do you feel any effect of that? Do you have any thoughts on, on how it's gone so far? Um, yeah, I, I'd rather prefer the one that we had last yeah. year and years before, just because they're able to come to two UIBL sessions, they're able to come to Peace Jam, and then they could come to the tournament a week after that, and then they come to Vegas. And that was just way better, I feel like. It gave, it gave me and other players a lot more opportunities to play in front of coaches. Is there a difference? Can you feel a difference when coaches are in the building versus when they're not? Yeah. What is, yeah. It's just kind of like, like at Peace Jam, it was just kind of more of a rarity. Yeah. Because, I mean, me, I got to play in front of coaches at, uh, at MBPA in yep. June, but like some of my teammates hadn't played in front of coaches since the first session in April. So they were just like, like they hadn't seen coaches there since April, so it was just kind of like. Do you feel like different. maybe guys played differently where it's a little bit um, like almost like they're rushing it, or do you feel like guys played differently with, with just the one opportunity? I think some guys do. Um, no one on my team really did, I did. Yeah. Uh, but I think it does affect some guys. I mean, but I mean, I, you kind of expect it. I mean, you haven't. You're trying to get a scholarship and you're trying to impress these coaches. And you play in front of them in April, and then I mean, some played in June, but some guys don't do high school stuff. Right. Some guys don't get invited to the camp. Did you guys have anything in, in Washington State for the month of June? No, I so only, you just had MVP. Yeah, I just had MVP. Yeah. How was that experience? How's this experience? I mean, you have a pretty unique opportunity to play at some high-level stuff. What's your takeaway yeah. from this type of stage? Um, it's good um, because they can see kind of how you play in a. Uh, a camp environment. Um, here is kind of more structured, yeah. uh, like team oriented. I mean, NBA was structured, but it's kind of, it more like team basketball. Yeah. You've got a chance to play with a lot of the same guys that you played there in Charlottesville as you do here with USA, where you get a chance to really kind of create some bonds with guys all over the country. Um, one of the things I did actually want to talk about too is we see at the NBA like super teams even more of a factor. Do these settings allow those kind of relationships to bond when you're teenagers? To carry up, but do you guys talk about that? Like, hey man, let's try to play together as long as we can. All the time, yeah, all the time. Uh, like when you're in the dorms at USA and, and uh, MBPA, I mean, you're just sitting in the rooms, kind of throwing out ideas, talking. Just 2K like, talk yeah, all the time, yeah, right? Like, man, what, Real if, life. what if, what if, what if, just kind of stuff like that. Um, and sometimes that stuff happens, so yeah, it's fun to talk about. Is that a realistic thing for you when you look at these great options that you have to go, hey, you know, it wouldn't be bad idea to play with a guy like that? Yeah, sure. Yeah. I mean, all, all these guys here, we got, I've been able to build a relationship with a lot of guys in my class and uh, other classes. So just, you know, build relationships with them and, you know, kind of talking about, hey, what if we go here or what sure. if we do this? I mean, it's cool. I mean, I play with them and against them, and they're all good players. And, right. And they're not selfish or anything, so I wouldn't mind it. You know, probably one of the few guys from the city of Seattle that gets a chance to go to this. There is a lineage, though, of guys for quite a while that have come from Seattle. To me, I'm biased. I think Seattle's one of the five best cities in the country for it basketball. Is. No, no, it is. What's it like? Explain what it's like, Seattle basketball, for maybe somebody that doesn't know what it's like. Yeah, it's a it's a super rich culture that not, yeah. a, lot, like, not a lot of these guys even know about. Um, but, I mean, if you really like look, Zach Levine, Jamal Crawford, Tony Rowan won a gold medal here at USA, uh, Marvin Williams, he wasn't from Bram he was from Bremerton, but he played for Team Seattle. I mean Tacoma too. Yeah. Isaiah Thomas, yep. like there's just been so many pros that come out. Rodney Stuckey, like the list goes on. Jason Terry, Aaron Brooks, and all those guys come back to Seattle and they and they give back Nate Robinson, they all around Seattle and they're all giving back to the youth. There is a brotherhood it feels like yeah. where there's a there's a, a ripple down effect to the younger guys. Who have you created a bond with and maybe you know look uh, up to? Jamal Crawford really yeah. kinda of took me under his wing and start like last summer he really like reached out to me. He didn't know my mom was my mom played pro, sure. so she was she was a pro from Washington, just on the girls' side. But uh, so she came, um, so she had known Jamal. He came, kind of took me under his wings, just kind of been a mentor to me. Um, to Dante Murray, um, Aaron Brooks. Aaron Brooks played under my high school coach uh, when he was at high school, so he's been at my high school and been up around me and stuff. Um, and a lot of other guys reached out. Jason Terry went to my mom's high school. Like it's just so it's such a close family. Man. Sure. Yeah. Well, you mentioned family too. I know you've got history with UW. I mean, there's always it seems like this built-in thing with Seattle guys that UW's always the first assumption, like they're going to be a team that's going to be in the race at the very end. Do you feel that? I mean, I would think it's a natural thought with UW's involvement with you and recruiting. Yeah, they're def UW's definitely going to be strongly yeah. considered. Um, but like, like my mom tells everyone, I tell everyone, I'm wide open. Like my parents aren't pushing me to go anywhere. Yeah, uh, it wouldn't be fair if they did. Even sure, if they wouldn't be fair if they pushed me to go to anywhere else. Right. Um, 
So yeah, they're totally letting me kind of control this process. My mom went through it. She was recruited by every school in the country. And she chose UW, but she knows that, um, you know, I might not choose that, but I might choose it, so. What do you like about the recruiting process? I know a lot of guys say, oh, it wears me down. It's a, it's a lot of energy, but what do you like about the process being recruited? Uh, man, I just like picking these coaches' brains, man. Like, I get the chance to talk to Calipari, Coach K, Coach Hopkins, Mark Q. I mean, the list goes on and on. And I could talk to a lot of them guys on the phone, over text, some of the assistants, all just a bunch of great basketball minds. Rick Barnes, Coach Kevin Durant. Like, I get to talk to those guys and, like, build relationships and, like, kind of learn from them. Sure. And it's just, like, picking their brains. Because they all, they've coached guys. They've coached some guys, coached Hall of Famers. So. Even recruiting, there's teaching that's involved, I'd imagine, right? Where they watch you the game and say, hey, we saw you, you play. The, right. Yeah. Like, how much do you value that? Does that allow you to really develop and cultivate a relationship? Yeah, no, I value that a lot. Um, like, for instance, like Duke's coach, uh, their assistant coach, John Shire, he saw me at Peace Jam, and I played really well at Peace Jam, but he was like, you play really well what? but I thought you could have protected the rim better, and I, I kind of noticed that by myself. Because usually I'm good at that, but at Peace Jam, I kind of felt myself not really getting a lot of blocks. Um, and he told me that, and it was like, I mean, I kind of value that just because having, like, an honest relationship, sure. not being, like, fake or phony, like, being a yes man, but like give me real feedback on right. what they think I did well, but what I think I can do better also. You're also in a unique situation where you will have an opportunity to pick one of the best programs in the country. How then do you decipher ultimately the one for you? Because they're all going to be great options, yeah. right? So how do you like pick, how do you sep start to separate the one? Yeah, just doing my research, um, watching watching the schools that are recruiting me, like watching them play on TV. Yeah. Um, like I can say this year, like I'm definitely gonna be paying a lot more attention to college basketball and like watching the teams that I'm, I'm being recruited by more than any time I watch it. Usually, I, usually I just watch it as like a fan. Sure. Now I'm gonna be more locked into it. Um, but also just a place that like I'm comfortable just like being there every day. Like, right. Just, that feels like a family. I'm comfortable with the staff there, from the head coach to the janitor. Like I'm just comfortable there. Um, place I can call home. Um, I'm not the type to get homesick, so distance don't really affect me. It's just a place I can go and like really just feel like I fit. Do you start to move in that next stratosphere with recruiting and taking official visits and getting on the road? Yeah, uh, after after this and then Nike Skills Academy, I'll pretty much be done with basketball for uh, leading up probably yeah. the whole fall to start, you know, rest a little bit and then start working out again. And that's when I say I'll probably take the rest of August to like sit down and, you know, narrow down the five schools right. I want to visit. Um, and schedule them, uh, but I would I would say that my five schools I'll visit, I'll probably like those won't be like my top five or anything. I just want to go to I want to go to schools that are far away. Makes know? sense. Because like, yeah, you know schools that are close by I can go kind of anytime. So I just kind of want to get out there to see them because I won't be able to like see them anytime. You know? Do you know anybody that you know for sure that you want to take a visit to? Yeah, Duke. I'll take one there for sure. sure. Uh, Kentucky. Yeah. I'm pretty sure those two, those two right now are like for sure. They Memphis, played some pretty good games too. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Memphis, Memphis and Tennessee, I'm kind of deciding which one because um, they're both in the same state, so I'm just kind of deciding which one I want to go to. Yeah. Uh, but Duke and Kentucky are pretty much a lot. So you'll take August off, lay low, recuperate, and start to put your mind behind it. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Plenty of great options, a lot to learn. Enjoy talking to you here at Colorado Springs. Thank you.